Hi there and welcome. My name is Dr. Marlena Jabara and I'm the proud founder of RadPod Squad. The RadPod Squad Fellowship offers an immersive learning experience tailored specifically to podiatric imaging. RadPod Squad combines comprehensive curricula, cutting edge techniques, and on-demand access to training that will provide you with the new knowledge and skills that you need to boost your confidence in imaging and truly make a difference in treating your patients. Check us out today, radpodsquad.com. Moving on to pest planus, the etiology of symptomatic adult flat foot is not universally agreed why this occurs. It may be produced by abnormal repetitive loading on the medial column, wearing down the medial structures. It can lead to a dysfunctional loss in ligament and tendon structure and definitely bone deformities. And the x-ray severity we know does not always correlate with the symptoms. In looking at the components of pest planus, we want to identify three components that occur in adult flat foot. The first is losing your longitudinal arch. We can pick that up through the calcaneo pitch angle and the lateral first metatarsal angle. Then we have hind foot valgus. That can be the lateral talocalcaneo angle and the AP. We can see it there. And forefoot abduction can further be seen in an AP talonavicular coverage angle and the first metatarsal talar angle. Let's take a look. Looking at the talonavicular coverage angle, tunneling in, remember we want to get to the articular endpoints of the navicula and the talus, and then bisect that, and we can see that the angle should be near neutral. When we have a situation in pest planus, notice that the angle is increasing, and that's a situation seen in pest planus, talonavicular elevated coverage angle. Looking at the lateral first metatarsal angle, we can appreciate Mary's line in the normal situation, the bisection of the talus, the bisection of the first metatarsal. In pest planus, notice that that talar vector declinates and decreases to under 12 degrees. An angle of between 15 to 30 is considered moderate disease, greater than 30 considered severe. Looking at the calcaneo pitch angle in these patients, where we have the normal state of affairs at 20, Anything less than 20, start to consider pest planus. And what we're doing is looking at the base of the fifth to the calcaneus, the calcaneus to the calcaneal cuboid, and measuring that angle. And some authors use between 17 to 36 as normal. I tend to use 20 as a cutoff and try to use that as a framework to think about what might be going wrong for our patients along the medial column or the lateral column. Looking at the AP Taylor first metatarsal angle, we can appreciate the normal state taking the bisection of the talus and seeing where that lies along the first metatarsal angle. Clearly here we can see this talar metatarsal angle doesn't meet and we have this widening of the AP talar first metatarsal articulation. The lateral talocalcaneal angle, very useful in pest planus on the lateral projection because the calcaneus is moving away from us and we can see the vector will increase in a situation of pest planus as the talus begins to declinate. We have our bisecting vector drawing our line from the calcaneus up to the cuboid, we see this angle widening in pest planus. Looking at Kite's angle or the AP talocalcaneal angle can help us appreciate whether or not we are at the state of pest planus and uncovering of the Taylor head also. Looking at the talus here, we can bisect the talus. Then we want to go along the lateral calcaneal sidewall. The angle between these two regions is referred to as talocalcaneal angle on a frontal projection. And what we're looking here is a widening of that talocalcaneal angle in pest planus as the talus begins to move medially with respect to the navicula and widening this angle. When we're looking at the SEMA line, this can be an architectural term which designates that the union of two curves is angulated. So in the normal situation, the SEMA line is seen to be a smooth, continuous curve, but in the broken SEMA line, which we can see when we have abnormal biomechanics, and abnormal alignment can be angulated. The lateral SEMA line can be seen here, again, a smooth, continuous articulation of Chopar. And here we can see the angulation, this broken SEMA line of someone who has pest planus. Are you ready to take your podiatric imaging skills to new heights? Check us out at radpodsquad.com. Explore our online learning community. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more enriching content.